spent this wait, money. Wait, wait, wait. So, so you're saying just because it costs a lot of money doesn't mean it's the best thing out there? Shockingly, no. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Whiskey, Lead, and Steel. Feelings Hurt While You Wait, the official podcast of Aggressive Defensive Solutions. I'm Lee Curling, and my co-host, Rick Sutton. And today, we're going to talk about quality of equipment and cost versus, uh, wow. cost versus value. Yep. So, Rick, what are your thoughts? Um, so, one of the things that I've noticed in, in the whole shooting community, and it comes across with a lot of different stuff, um, but... People will go out and the first thing that they'll want to do is they'll want to spend a bunch of money on a bunch of equipment in the hopes that that's going to make them a better shooter right off the get-go, right? Um, and that ties in with the, well, we don't know what we don't know. And so they go out and they assume, well, I spent a lot of money on this. And so, A, it must be high quality because it was expensive. And B, um, because I spent this wait, money. Wait, wait. So, so you're saying just because it costs a lot of money doesn't mean it's the best thing out there? Shockingly. No, <laughs> right? So there's a bunch of stuff out there that is high dollar shit, quite honestly. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going to call anybody out. I'm not going to throw anybody's equipment under the bus um, until we've had the opportunity to give them the chance to send us the gear so we can beat on it, put our teeth on it, and see if it holds up to you know what it needs. But So they spend this money, and then they assume that all the money that I spend on all this gear is going to automatically make me a better shooter. Um, and A, if it's not good equipment, it's really not going to help you. Um, and that's the thing that we run into. And then the other thing is, you cannot out-gear your skill set. And I've got a, I've got a fairly decent anecdote about that. Um, but what are your thoughts on this? I mean, you, as a first sergeant, you were, you were involved in procurement of stuff. Um, so you, you, you kind of had some say in, in what folks got and what they didn't get. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I don't know how much, you know, say I had in, in, you know, what Big Army decided, you know, we were going to get or not. But what you're allowed to carry in your gear. But, but yeah, but, but you know, you know what gear was carried and, and, and what we allowed and what we didn't allow. There, there, there is, there was, there's some truth to that statement. Um, I, you know, I, I think you're right, right? There, there's, there's a lot of uh, expensive Gucci gear that adds no real value. Nope. It adds cost, but doesn't add, add, add any real value. And it adds weight. And it, uh, <laughs> and, and it adds weight, but but at the same time, quality is important. Yes. Right. Um, you know, everybody's got a red dot today, right? Not you know, okay. <laughs> Not you. Okay. Euphemistically. Yes. Uh, you're, there's a lot of red dots out there, right? Yeah, it's, there's it's a shitload thing, of red dots. Right. And 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 there's a lot of quality red dots that are not not exceedingly expensive no but no. when you go back a few years right and, and and red dots started to take off yep you know we had we had aim point mm -hmm. you had eotech yeah right those those were kind of the, the two big two big you know dogs you know on the porch mm -hmm. and you're looking at five six seven hundred dollar oh yeah you know right a, a piece of equipment yep and and what's the next thing that happened right that the, there was a the to the 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 explosion of the Chicom knockoffs. Yes. Right. And there was, and people started getting into this, and they would get the the um, um, the the paintball. Right. Oh yeah. Oh versions, yeah. The, right? the airsoft guns. The, air, the airsoft. That's All it. those make companies it, build these it, air. Right? Just look, make your make your BB gun right. look so, like. So I M4. mean, the, the 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 red dots, the the flip up sights. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, all of that. Right. So, so you, you ended up with with at one point you had the cheap knockoffs that were, were not designed for an actual firearm. Yeah. And then you were and, and then you had the other end where everything was, was expensive. So uh, understanding what you're getting is important. Yes. Um, thankfully, now, you know, that that middle section has kind of been filled in with 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 a lot of different, you know, a, a huge number of. of of vendors, but to to varying degrees mm -hmm. of quality, though to varying degrees of quality, right? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I I, I do agree. Y y going out there, I'm getting new into this, and I'm going to go spend three thousand dollars on, you know, holsters and you know the highest end gun I can possibly 
get, um, you know, to, to what end? That's not going to make you a better shooter, no. right? No. Ammo is going to make you a better shooter. Time on the range is going to make you a better yeah. shooter. Yeah, mm -hmm. and which, of course, that leads right into the whole the whole idea behind when we started the Second Saturday series. Right. Was we had I, I had talked to guys who said, hey, I'd like to get into competition shooting. I'd like to do the run and gun thing, but I don't want to spend $400 to join somebody's club and then spend $1,000 on handgun and $400 on holster and then find out that I don't like this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so... Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I tell people as they're coming along as I'm teaching them, as I'm training them, um, especially defensive handgun shooters, um, is first thing that you got to do is got to go out and get good with your weapon system, whatever mm -hmm. your weapon system is. Then we get into the whole, you got to have a quality weapon, right? If you mm -hmm. go buy some piece of crap, you know, pig metal thing. 380 star. Yeah, 380 star of Bursa Thunderer. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you buy that, you, you're you not going to get good training out of that because it's just not a quality weapon. So you've yeah. got to have a decent entry-level quality weapon. You don't have to you don't have to go buy a staccato, nothing wrong with staccato, but you don't have to buy a staccato to learn how to shoot a gun. Right. You, there's plenty of other gun good guns out there, SIGs, Smiths, even Glocks. Um, decent, sorry, Adrian. Uh, good <laughs> weapons, right? <laughs> and and, and they're, they're quality weapons. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to learn to drive in a Maserati. So... You got to buy a decent gun, and then you got to start spending time on the range, and you've got to be focused on your training, which also means that you got to buy decent ammo. If you buy shit ammo, you're not going to get good patterns. Mm -hmm. And while while handguns, it's you know half minute a dirt bag is what it needs to be. If you're buying this Russian bullshit leftover ammo from the Cold War, mm -hmm. and you end up shooting an eight inch pattern at five yards just because of inconsistencies then you're not getting quality training out of that. Um, and then, once you get as good as you can possibly be, as accurate as you can be, and as fast as you can be consistently, then you need to go to the gym, right? Because at that point in time, your athleticism comes into play, mm -hmm. right? So if you're, if you're looking at cutting full seconds, if you can cut full seconds off of your part-time, then your equipment's irrelevant, mm -hmm. right? So you get good at shooting. You get, then you get in shape, as in shape as you can get. You mm -hmm. don't have to come out here and be Lance Armstrong or Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have to be as in good a shape as you can be. And then when you have topped out your physicality and you've topped out your weapons me mechanical skills, that's when your equipment really comes into play. And that it's, at that stage of the game, now you're looking at cutting hundreds and thousands of seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's really where it matters. And until you get to that point, your, your gear really is damn near irrelevant, you know, so, as, as long as it's decent gear. So what I hear you saying is the fundamentals of marksmanship is what will make you a good shooter. Fundamentals of marksmanship. Not, not, not the $3,000 nope. gun. No. And to that end, this is a funny story. There was a guy. He's a buddy of yours. You, you know him and like him. He and I used to work together. And uh, he was on the shooting team with us. And so we're sitting in the office one day, and he was bragging about this um, PS1 that he had. I, mm -hmm. I, I got a PS1. I'm a white feather uh, shooter. Shout out to white feather. Um, but I'm, I'm a white feather graduate, and I've got this. It's a forty-five hundred dollar gun, and I went, "It's it's a Remington seven hundred, right?" And he goes, "Yeah." I said, "With a Leopold scope." He goes, "Yeah." I said, "It's not a forty-five hundred dollar gun." Well, yeah, it is. That's why I said, "No, you, you paid forty-five hundred dollars." Well, it's it's not a forty-five hundred dollar gun. Well, you don't understand. I said, "You're right. I don't understand. I don't understand." <laughs> I said, it, what's the chamber? He said, 308. I said, is it a minute of angle? Well, yeah, it's guaranteed minute of angle. I said, okay, so so it's a $4,500 gun with a Leupold scope and a synthetic stock, and it's minute of angle, and it's chamber 308. And he goes, yeah, I go, it's not $4,500. Well, that's why I said, stop. Here's the deal, dude. It's not. Somebody talked them into it. And don't get me wrong, it's a great gun. I've got a Remington 700. It's a fantastic gun. Um... I said, but it's, that's what the market is selling it for, but that doesn't mean that's what it's worth. And he's, he starts telling me all this stuff. And I said, look, I'll tell you what, dude. I have a Ruger 77 with, I forget who makes the scope on it because somebody gave me the gun. I said, I have a Ruger 77 chambered 30 out 6 And the guy who gave it to me used to kill deer with it in Alaska all the time. I said, we'll go to the range and you pick the course and I'll shoot you for guns. 
He goes, no, well, no, we're not going to I'm not. So I'll tell you what, I get it. You're, you're going to tell me that my gun's not worth what your gun is. I said, i tell you what I'll do. I'll blue painter's tape a $1,000 bill to the stock. And I'll shoot you for guns. And he said, no. And I said, that right there proves that you know that that gun doesn't make the difference. Where the difference is made, and I'm not I'm not a white feather graduate. Hell, all I learned to do is shoot guns in the Marine Corps. But the proof there is that guy understood that time on the range, sending rounds down range, makes all the difference in the world. It doesn't matter about your equipment. As long as your mm -hmm. equipment is within standard. Um, now, as you get better, your equipment gets better. I remember... Um, when I first started teaching down at Blackwater, everybody was carrying aim points, aim point comp mm -hmm. fours. And the aim point comp four, which is a great system, costs the same today as it did back then. So in relative mm -hmm. dollars, they're not as expensive. Uh, Trigicon, Trigicon makes a great site. They make a phenomenal site. Um, but they're not cheap. Mm -hmm. Now, the other side of that is they're designed for you to fall out of a helicopter and roll down the Hindu Kush mountains with your gun in your hand and it still works. So at some point in time, you reach a point where you have to pay for the quality that is that superlative. But it's, it's, the, it's the quality for what you're yes, using it for. It, it, and it all comes back to mission, mission essential, mission right. specific. You do not need, you do not need military equipment that's designed to be hit with a hammer if you're just going to arrange. That's exactly if you're, right. If you're doing competitive shooting. Exactly right. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. And and to be quite honest, it's not going to be as good for what you're using it for. No. Right? The the, the size of the dot, the the minute of angle on, on some of that military equipment is not designed for the precision shooting that you're looking for in competition. That's right. Because, right. Uh, because again, it's, if you're a competitive you're, shooter, you're, you're driving a race car. Right. Right? That, that Trigicon ACOG... Mm -hmm. That was designed to be given to a 19-year-old <laughs> exactly. E2 in the Army or the Marine Corps <laughs> right. who was like, I didn't pay for that goddamn thing. I didn't pay for it. Yeah. Right. I, I, can't, I can't get this crate of ammo open. Let me use it for a hammer. Right. Uh, and before you say that doesn't happen, I've seen it happen. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah. yeah you right. know, so exactly. right. It's all relative. It's, it's, it's all, all relative, right. mission specific, mm -hmm. and it's all relative. And then dollars for dollars. Now, that said, if you go to the gun show... And you buy something that says Trigicon on the side of it, um, and you paid three hundred dollars for it. It's not made by Trigicon. <laughs> it's a really good Chinese knockoff, and it's probably not going to hold a zero after your first shot. I think. I think. I think years ago, years ago, I did a, a blog post on this. Oh one, yeah, one, one, yeah, one, yeah. One, that's one right. Of the, the actual Trigicons yeah. that we had versus one of the the, the knockoffs that, yep. that, that showed up and and kind of. Showing you the the quality difference between the yep. two, and it, you know, hey, let's face it that 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 counterfeit one, it worked okay. Yeah, it worked all right. Um, I mean, I don't think I would have wanted to take it, you know, down mm. range somewhere. No, no, but you know, it zeroed okay. It shot okay. Uh -huh. it, it seemed to did that one. I think that one held a zero. Um, um you know, it didn't walk yeah, off fairly well. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I wouldn't want mm -hmm. to make a five hundred yard shot with it, but mm -hmm. for what it was, yeah. Right. But again, it's counterfeit. And we don't support counterfeit anything. I don't, I don't counterfeit support anything. counterfeit anything. Right. So. Yeah. But so, you know, once again, um, look, at what you're, look at what it is that you want to do with your equipment and figure out where you're going with it. And then do a cost analysis and go, okay, is this really worth the value? Am I going to get the value out of this? Or instead of buying that $700 red dot, should I just... Buy seven hundred dollars worth of ammo and go to the range and get good with what I've got until I really need something like that. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I, I think you think you're right on right on the money there. Right, it's the fundamentals of marksmanship. Right, time on the range, knowing your equip the equipment that you have, and yeah, and and starting to upgrade your equipment when you can be when you can. When you can outshoot your equipment, that's the time to upgrade. There you go. And I'll tell you what, there's, there's not a lot out, I'm outshooting right now. 
right? I mean, it's just, no. right? I mean, you know, it, it doesn't matter whether I've got a, you know, you know, a SIG or I don't, I don't, I don't think, you know, staccato is going to, it's going to help me out, right? That, 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 that's an expensive gun. Yes, it is. So you should get, you should get Mike Brainy firearms performance enhancement to trick, <laughs> out, to trick you out a SIG. <laughs> All right. Anything else? No, nah, man. As always, I uh, hope you found this entertaining and informative. Um, I don't know that we hurt anybody's feelings yet. Well, we might have. You, you Bursa might have Thunderers hurt. suck. <laughs> if that hurt your feelings, you deserve to have your feelings hurt. If you're carrying a Bursa Thunderer, fuck it. Just buy a Taurus. I mean, that's at least, you know, made on this continent. It's still a shitty gun, but at least if you break it, they'll give you a new one. Bursa suck. End quote. All right. And on that, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. And yeah, well, just thanks for listening. All right. Have a good one. Bye. That said, if you go to the gun show and you buy something that says Trigicon on the side of it, um, and you paid $300 for it, it's not made by Trigicon. <laughs> it's a really good Chinese knockoff. <laughs>